Well, welcome to what should be a productive day out here at the river house, but isn't. We can't do anything. So I'm taking it as a equipment maintenance day. There is a bunch of welding I just had to wrap up on the backhoe. And since I have the big welder here anyways, I figured it'd be a good time to weld on the excavator. So one of the problems we've got are a number of pins that are moving in the wrong spots. So pins are really only supposed to move where they've got hardened bushings and grease. And so you take this thumb, for instance, and instead of moving in this center block here on the piston where I've got, Jesus, did I do that? Where I've got a hardened bushing and a grease fitting, it's wanting to, to spin out here. So I've got some tabs to weld on that I can stop it from, from spinning right there and then this main bucket pivot pin. It doesn't move too much, but it does move. So I'm gonna see if I can get it back up here where it belongs. We have got the uh, main bucket pivot with grease fittings. And there are no grease fittings in the thumb pivot. So this pin needs to go right here so that it pivots with the thumb and then that'll force it to not spin inside this joint, but force it to spin in that joint and that joint, both of which are greased. Hmm. If I can get this thing apart right here, we're missing a, a grease fitting down in there. I could be misreading this one. I, I might have to I might have to spend a little more time studying it, but I can tell you that's not supposed to pivot. And that's not supposed to pivot. So if nothing else, I can at least fix those two. Alright, so this is how it's gonna work. This is actually Dad's design. I was gonna weld a tab that was straight up and he came up with this. It's way more elegant than what I was gonna do. It's just a piece of pipe cut. So it hangs over. And that'll prevent that from spinning more than just a little bit. And then on this one, I've decided to do it. And it's just a tab. That'll get welded on. My problem is I do not want to take that off that pin out. I don't want to do it. So I'm going to weld it. I know that this this arm does move in and out some so I'll make sure I give it enough room and I'll just weld what I can knowing I can't get all the way up in there but I believe it'll be fine. I don't know that I truly need to get up there and weld the same pin on for that because this pivots through quite a bit as it moves back and forth. But that barely moves at all. I mean, that, that just goes from there to there. Uh, when this piston is all the way up, it lays flat. When this piston is down, this is the farthest it gets. It gets right there, so that thing just moves like this. So I doubt, I doubt I need to worry about it up there. There's nothing like the slop there is down here. I know that for sure. But we'll see. I mean, the machine is here and the welder's here, so. I think the welding's all done now. 
I did end up putting this one on. I went back and forth. I could tell from the grease that it hadn't spun any time recently. But when I got to looking at it, I could also see that all the paint had been taken off in a complete circle. So at some point it had spun repeatedly. So I just, I just did it. Now those two pins can't spin. Now that no longer spins freely. Also it keeps this thing up out of the way where I can't hook it on something and bend it. I once again went in here and tried to get that broken off zert fitting out. Couldn't do it. I was going to put the bolts in but the ones, um, the ones I asked dad to pick up for me I asked for coarse thread and these are fine so we're stuck on that for a little while. These are nice and tight now. I don't know that getting this grease fitting uh, functional is as big a deal as long as that pin is pivoting with the thumb. Because if it's pivoting with the thumb, then it can't keep pivoting right here, which is what it was doing. So I think that'll be okay now. Everything's greased. I scraped all the extra off because that's my tendency to over grease. So I got that scraped off. I think, I think we're ready to go. Uh, I believe I'm going to take this down to where the rock crusher is. I drilled and blasted. And I want to see if I was successful in knocking that rock loose. So I'm going to use the big girl. <laughs> I got to get through here without taking down the internet. So right there is where I did the blasting. Just two holes. The problem I'm having is as I run the backhoe down to scoop up the crushed gravel, I run the hoe up on this flat of rock and I suspect that's, that's what broke that pin is, is basically backing into it like that. So I did two shots right there. I, I think the rest of this is probably pretty loose. This looks like one of the active places they were mining, so I think that I can probably just rip up chunks over there. I guess we're all about to find out together, and I'll get to watch my uh, pin corrections and see if they work.
I don't exactly know how or why <laughs> testing this turned into a full reshape of this whole area down here, but nonetheless, it did. I've inherited my son's guilt about taking down small trees. Trying to figure out what I can do with that one, if I can scoop it out whole and put it someplace. But I can't imagine once I rip it out, it'll survive. The other two or three we've tried, it hasn't worked, so... Well, so much for getting a bunch out with the blasting. It uh, appears to be quite hard and not much worked. So it's going to take three or four more hits right in there, and probably six hits out in there. So I'm going to get this graded out, make my decision with that tree, flatten and move this roadside over, get that cleaned off as best I can and then we can move forward with the idea of I mean this is all pointless stuff but I literally can't work up above I cannot work right now and I won't be able to work on it at least until tomorrow so I figure if I can solve a problem which caused me a problem with the backhoe then so be it. That's what we're doing today. Also, it's fun. So, there's that too. Oh, that is breaking up nice. Well, it's a mess, but it's a good mess. It's interesting what sometimes the blasting will do. Because I'd gotten in there and pulled on this and simply could not break it. Now, okay, maybe I wasn't pulling on it quite as hard as I could, but it simply would not break. And I shot four shots that were all right down in here, and the next thing I know I've moved all the way up there. I really don't know what to tell you on that. I got a nice big pile of mostly clean rock, although you can see so much of that flat, that'll all have to be picked out. I want to keep that. So I'll have to make a a pallet or a pile somewhere. And though it's not related, you can see the first bit of the new um, upper property road. So 
So the current road goes past the house and then just goes straight up. Well, there's one real straight stretch I don't know that I can get out of it. But one of my goals is to make a passable road up there. So here's the beginning of it. It will come through here. It will go around that knoll. It'll come out right up there. It'll go across to the base of that cliff and back into that big pile of rock up there and then curl up. And in so doing, I'll have made a road that's half as steep, although it'll be twisty. I also, when I was walking it today, I ran into a Canadian goose up on top. No idea what he's doing up there. He wasn't happy to see me. But yeah, I think I think we're done. I'm gonna gonna head on down. This is a very low priority. This is a when I'm angry at the world or just something about just sitting and moving dirt makes my brain function better. So if I'm working on a problem or something, I'll, I'll just come down in here and, and work my way around. Uh, a little sketchy with that, uh, that fiber optic. Man, I wish there was a way I could convince them to relocate that. <clears throat> I was always thinking if they were going to move the road, I would make the push that uh, they put the power line down alongside the road or even trench it in which seemed quite likely because that's what they've been doing in a lot of other places but they just installed a flashing 40 mile an hour curves ahead sign down over there and one over there I think so in my mind that might mean they have no intention of widening the road and they might just slap that band-aid on and call it a day so I'll just have to be really careful with half the county's fiber optic above my head. But look how glass smooth it is out there today. What a difference the last two weeks has been this, this day. What a tremendous difference. I want to row across and explore all that with Shay. Today would have been a great day to do it. Oh well. I'm happy. I didn't get stuff working towards the house, but I got stuff done, and uh, tomorrow I walked around up there, and I'll be able to, as long as it doesn't rain or snow again tonight, I'll be able to work out there tomorrow, so tomorrow that's what we'll do. Huge fish just jumped out there somewhere. Thanks for coming along with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you later.